Hey guys, what is up and I welcome you to my champion guide for the one and only Zeb, the Master of Shadows. This guide has been requested by many people on numerous amounts of videos on my channel so I'm really happy to finally bring it to you guys. Once again, please don't forget to throw in a like down below if you did enjoy this and found it useful. But without any further ado, let us finally jump straight into the guide. Zed's passive, Contempt for the Weak, pretty much lets his basic attack against a target below 50% HP as you can see there deal bonus magic damage. That is based off of the target's max HP. It also puts a small debuff icon on the target because the same target cannot be hit again by this passive once every 10 seconds. Zed's Q bully has him throw a shuriken that deals full damage to his first target but 60% to subsequent targets. If a shadow is active, it will also throw a shuriken, however it will deal less damage if two hit on the same target but it will restore some energy. Zed's W ability is one of his main spells. It has a passive effect that increases Zed's bonus AD. An active effect where Zed summons a shadow ahead of him for 4 seconds which can be swapped once. And of course the shadow mimics Zed's Q and E abilities and if a target is hit twice by a mimicked ability, Zed restores energy. Zed's E ability, Shadow Slash, has Zed spin his blades dealing AoE damage and if a champion is hit, it will reduce the W cooldown by 2 seconds. If one of Zed's shadows hits a target with Shadow Slash, it will apply a slow as well. And finally, Zed's ultimate, Death Mark. When using this ability, Zed becomes untargetable for 0.75 seconds as he dashes to his target and marks him for death. This ability also spawns a shadow at his cast location for 6 seconds that he can also swap between. After 3 seconds, the mark explodes, dealing Zed's flat auto attack damage plus a percentage of all the physical and magical damage that Zed has dealt to his target. And now, probably the main part of this guide, the builds. Starting off with the masteries, you can see that I run 2190. This is actually quite a standard page on any AD assassin. Personally, I feel this is the most ideal page for Zed, and I don't see many other options. And of course, I get 9 points in the defense tree. I don't need anything from the utility tree, so that one is completely useless, and the 9 points spent in the defense help quite a lot in the laning phase. And for masteries, I simply run flat AD reds and quints flat armor yellows and MR per level blues. This page is also extremely standard on most AD melee type assassins, with of course some exceptions. One variation to this rune page can be to simply run full armor pen reds and quints, or you can replace two quints with lifesteal rather than flat AD or armor pen depending on which route you took. But this is the page that you will see me run in almost all of my games, and clearly it does work. Now let's go into how you should level up your skills. In terms of prioritization, your Q is always number 1, followed by your E and then of course followed by your W, and whenever you can, you want to put a point into your ultimates. However, in terms of leveling up your skills for the first 4 levels, you almost always want to level up Q on level 1, then get your W, then get your E so you have all 3 skills by level 3 and then start maxing Q from there. Now let's go over what items you want to build on Zed. I'm going to go over 3 different types of builds that all work on Zed and also tell you which ones I prefer and why. However, each build will start off the exact same way, either a door and shield and pots or a longsword and pots. If you want to play safe and you're a little bit scared of your laner because you're up against someone super aggressive like maybe a Ziggs or another 80 person like Yasuo, Thorn Shield is the best way to go. I usually only get Longsword if I feel either extremely confident at winning my lane or if I'm up against someone I need to bully hard such as a Kassadin or a Gragas. You almost always want to rush that Brutalizer which is why Longsword sometimes might be better since you can get it a lot sooner. After you finish that you almost always want to start working to your Blade of the Rune King and then also get your boots. Personally I prefer the plus 5 boots just because I like to be very mobile with my assassins. However, as the game progresses and as it gets into late game, usually I tend to switch out the plus 5 boots for either Merc boots or Ionian boots, it all depends on the matchups. However, after the Blade of the Rune King, this is where the build starts to vary. The one I'm showing on the right, this very second, is the most standard one where you simply just get Black Cleaver followed by Last Whisper and then any of the items you see listed below. This build's purpose is to make Zed able to assassinate a target very quickly and just get out. But in terms of prolonged fights, I don't think this is a very good one, nor do I prefer it anymore. So let me show you guys what I prefer nowadays. This build right here I actually call Zed the Penetrator. The reason it's called that is actually quite simple. After the Blade of the Ruin King I actually get a Yomus first, then I get a Last Whisper, then I get a Black Cleaver, or you can get Black Cleaver and then Last Whisper, it's not a huge difference. But of course the main purpose of this build is to have as much armor pen as possible while also having pretty good dueling power thanks to the Yomus. The good thing I like about this build as well is that it will make me deal next to true damage to all the squishies, making the assassination attempts extremely easy. Plus, while you're busy split pushing, which you usually should be as Zed, the Yomus helps get the turrets down even faster. Now I do prefer this build a lot more than the previous one, which is considered the standard build, but there's also another build that I prefer even more than this one. 
This build right here is the definition of OP. Whenever you play Zed, you always have those problems where the enemy team gets Quicksilver Sash, they get Hourglass, or they even have abilities like Kale ulti or Lissandra ulti, and your ulti just becomes super useless. Well, I honestly think that this build is the way around it, because this one, your ulti is just not as a necessity as it used to be. I mean, sure, you still want to use your ulti, and you know, it will do a lot of damage with this build, especially if you crit while your mark is on them, because that will just add so much damage, but it's not completely necessary. Your auto attack damage is going to be so large that your ulti is just pretty much used as a gap closer. I really recommend trying this one out, I mean of course it is a bit expensive because of the IE but once you finish that IE, oh my goodness gracious me, you will do some insane damage. Try it out, I promise you guys you will absolutely rape face. The laning phase of Zed can either be extremely easy or extremely hard. And how aggressive you are in the lane all depends on the matchup. If you're up against someone like a Gragas, you can definitely go aggressive from level 1 with your Q and your auto attacks. However, on the other hand, if you're against someone like a Ziggs or a Syndra, someone who is extremely poke heavy and super strong in lane, you will have to be quite passive and try farming with your Q as much as possible. At level 2, when you get a point into your W, this is when you can typically start the harass phase with your Q. Again, keep in mind this is all very situational. Sometimes you just simply want to save your energy and your Q just to simply CS. Other times you can just harass and then walk up for the CS with your auto attack. Or if you harass very well, you can just go to your shadow and go more aggressive. Or simply just teleport to your shadow get one auto attack if they're below 50% HP for that passive auto attack. One thing you will usually see me do with assassins is called a fake out where I pretend like I'm backing away and I simply just go back in and go for the kill. Let me show you a pretty cool clip of me doing that at level 2 against an Orianna. So in this matchup, Ariana will always try to harass you with her auto attacks and try to shield any damage that you put out. However, she eventually got a little too careless and she went in for the auto attack once more as you can see. So I simply just throw a double Q onto her, hit both of them and just teleport to my shadow. Pop the ignite because I know I'm going in for the kill and I get a really nice first blood. Of course, at level 3, this is when you get your E ability and you can even make more plays because the slow from the E makes it a lot easier to land your Q. So whenever you do that harass, you usually want to put out the shadow, land the E, Wait just about a second, maybe half a second, and then throw your Q to make sure that you hit it. Other certain times, you want to just do it extremely quickly. Throw the W and EQ almost at the same time because it makes it extremely fast and almost impossible for your opponent to dodge it unless you miss. Typically, if the enemy champion is at about full HP, you want to just throw the W for the quick harass EQ combo and then maybe go in for the auto attack or two and then back out, wait for the cooldowns and then do it again when you can proc your passive and go for the kill. One thing a lot of new Zed players may completely underlook is the fact that Zed's passive does actually quite a bit of damage. So they might be getting ganked or they might be in a small trade and thinking that they're gonna lose the trade but they do not understand just how much damage the passive can really do and just how much burst it can do. So just now in the clip you saw a pretty nice outplay showcasing pretty much just that, the power of the passive and the juking capabilities. Another very important tip to remember with Zed is that he's extremely quick at clearing waves. So of course with that being said, after you clear your wave in the middle lane using your W most likely, you can simply go to the race, W over the wall and clear them in a matter of seconds and then get back just in time for the new wave in the middle lane. This is a very important thing to remember because it will give you a huge advantage in CS and just overall gold. When clearing waves or going for the harass, be careful of using your shadow a little too much because if you use it at the wrong time and you do go win, or you just simply don't have it, you are extremely vulnerable to a gank. To know when to use it and when not to use it is simply just a matter of experience and knowing where the jungler is. If you are behind in lane from a gank or just in general, always use your Q to farm over harass. One of the worst matchups for Zed is of course against the Kale and usually you cannot beat her especially once you get level 6, but before that you do have a chance. You can do one of two things, ask your jungler to gank for you a few times before she hits 6 or Try getting 6 before she does, as you can see I'm zoning her out here, and then as I'm 6 and she's not, I just go back in for the kill with my ulti and I know she can't stop it. So just there you saw it, like I mentioned before, I'm going in for the harass, throwing my W out, doing some damage, proccing my passive, I go in for the kill, put some serious damage onto her, proc my passive once more, that's why I flashed, and then go back to my shadow's original location. Once Kale does hit level 6, she becomes a bit more of a problem, but if you run the build that I mentioned earlier in the build section of this guide, that build can most likely beat out a kill unless you're just super far behind. So overall Zed has a pretty decent laning phase, it can either be very good or very bad like I said, but it is also heavily matchup oriented. Don't forget that Zed is extremely good at juking skill shots, whether it be with his W or his ultimate, so champions like Ziggs should have a pretty hard time to land certain skill shots against you, especially their ultimates. And also don't forget that Zed, even though he's a melee champion, has somewhat decent range thanks to his shadows. Don't forget to harass when appropriate. 
All in all, you just want to farm as much as you can until your ultimate is ready and then you can start making the plays with your shadows, dodging skills and getting the kills. Mid to late game is where I feel like Zed really begins to shine, especially in the mid game. Your goal around this time of the game is to get to the stage of being able to 1v1 anyone on the team. Because of this, Zed is one of the best split pushers in the game because not only can he clear waves fast and take down turrets very fast, but like I said, you should be able to 1v1 almost anyone. It is very important by this stage of the game to at least have your Blade of the Ruined King and your Brutalizer before you go and start split pushing. You can always roam to bot, top or even go to your jungler's jungle to help them with any sort of sticky situation and try getting a few pickoffs as well since you are very good at doing that and you're also very good at getting out of sticky situations. Once you finally build your Brutalizer into another item and start going for the next one, so for example at Yomus and then you're working on the Last Whisper, this is usually when the big teamfights will start to happen. As Zed, your main goal in teamfights is to try and assassinate a squishy target, so the ADC or the mid laner with Zed's new ultimate. It is a lot easier to do so because you can go pretty much as ham as you want, use almost every single skill in your arsenal, use all your items, your Blade of the Rune King, your Yomus and etc. The reason for this is because you always have an escape route your ultimate's shadow, so if you ever get in a bad situation or you're 100% sure that your target will die from the death mark, just press R, go back to the safety of your shadow and you should be good to go to make another play. But a team fight will usually begin one of two ways when you're playing Zed. Either you will go extremely ham with your ultimate and get a pick off before a full team fight breaks out and then you just simply press R and get out, or someone else initiates on your team like your jungler or top laner and a regular 5v5 happens. If this is the case, then I highly recommend that before you go ham into the team fight for the squishy, you throw your W in the middle of it first. Throw your W, throw an E, throw a Q, all that good stuff, wait about 2 seconds, maybe 3, and then jump to your shadow because usually people will just be all over your shadow, completely forget it is even there, and you can just go to it and then ult you right on your target. This usually ends up being one of the best ways to initiate and also after you've done your ult, you're gonna use E a few more times, your W should be pretty much up again. But again, I personally feel like Zed's team fights aren't the best, they're okay. But he does excel at split pushing and 1v1ing, which is why you usually want to be split pushing. In a team fight, you're gonna need some really good mechanics and good control of your shadows in order to get in, get the kill, and get out. But if you're simply split pushing, there's so many outplays you can do against your target. And the cool thing about split pushing with Zed is that if they send two or more targets while you're split pushing, for instance, bottom, your team, while they're dancing Baron, can start actually doing Baron. And then while you're busy maybe getting the kill, outplaying, or wasting time of the people who went down to try and stop you, your team can get Baron. And of course, while all that's happening, you even have a pretty decent chance at making plays, such as getting a kill or even both and getting out. Zed, of course, is a very difficult champion to play and will require a lot of practice before you can easily manage his shadows and do amazing outplays, just completely wowing everyone in the game. And some final general tips I want to mention to you guys before I end off this guide. First, I have a series called Red Moments where I showcase a variety of mainly Zed plays in slow motion and I discuss it, show you guys why I did what, why it works and a lot of cool stuff like that. Highly recommend checking that out. Generally, people will forget about your shadow's locations and where they are. Use this to your own advantage and catch them off guard when going for a kill or juke. This is something that I mentioned in the teamfight stages of the game where you throw your W first and then wait a few seconds, throw a few skills, go to the shadow and then go to your target. Try not to make yourself too vulnerable in a teamfight but just going in at the start before a lot of the skills are blown or you will get nuked. Don't forget you are an assassin and unless you know what you're doing and you're going in purposely to try and dodge a skill with your ultimate, I recommend you throw in the W like I said, wait, let all the skills be blown and then go in for the kills. Also, don't forget that your ultimate shadow has immense range and a longer duration than your W. Use this to juke by your ulti, W flash away the opposite way, run for a bit, bait the enemy, press R and then go back to your ultimate shadow. Don't forget that Zed is amazing at 1v1ing and split pushing which is what you usually should be trying to do. And of course that you can do a lot of sweet plays by dodging a lot of skills with his W and his ultimate shadow and the part of the ultimate where you're invulnerable. But that does mark the end of this guide, I really hope that you have learned something new. Again, don't forget that a lot of this stuff comes just simply from experience. The more you play Zed, the better you'll get at him and the more things you will discover for yourself and you just won't need me to tell you everything. The way I like to look at guides and people like us who try to educate others is that we simply build the frame for the picture that you must paint. So go buy a damn brush to start painting your picture. I'm just kidding, but in all honesty, 
really just keep playing and playing and playing don't get demoralized if you do bad just keep learning and you will get the mechanics required to play zet at a high level so i really hope you guys enjoyed this video please do throw in a like down below in this video if you did enjoy it maybe subscribe if you haven't write down in the comments if you have any questions i'll try to answer as many as i can i'm also going to be releasing a zet montage pretty soon so definitely start looking for that as well pretty sweet place there and overall definitely check out my red moment series where you'll see a lot of really sweet zet plays that i'm sure you'll learn a thing or two from but all in all i really hope you guys enjoyed this video please again throw in a like down below if you did enjoy it, and i'll see you next time peace